Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, we will be solving the first and last occurrences problem statement on Geeks for Geeks. This is a very popular problem statement asked many a times in interview questions of companies like Amazon and Microsoft. Let's first read the problem statement. So you can see here uh, we are given a sorted array of n elements and we have to find the index of first and the last occurrence of element x in the array. So it is very obvious uh, that whenever a problem is given on searching, we try to implement linear search because it is the easiest way of searching. But because an important information is given here in this question that the array is sorted, so in order to find the optimal solution of the problem, we will solve this question with the help of binary search algorithm. Let's see a few more things about this problem. We can see in the example given that input is 4, 4 is the size of the array, x is the element which we have to find in the array, this array ARR is sorted, the elements which are given here are 1, 3, 3, 4. You can see that element 3 appears twice where index 1 gets the first occurrence of this element 3 and index 2 gets the last occurrence of this element 3. So that means the output will be 1 and 2. Another example given here is asking us to find element 5 in the sorted array. As the element does not exist, so the function will be returning minus 1. So before we write the solution for this problem, let's perform dry run with some set of numbers. So these are the set of values on which we are going to perform this dry run. We can see that element 5 appears 3 times in the list. The first occurrence is at index 2 and the last occurrence is at index 4. So this is my element 5. To start with the searching process, I am going to get the value of start which is at 0, end at 6 and this process will be repeated till this condition is true which is this. This is true for the first time and now we are going to calculate the value of mid 0 plus 6 divided by 2 and we get 3. We can see that at index 3 we have got the value of x. The condition becomes true. Once the condition is true, I am going to store this value, the value of mid and let's say here I create few blocks and this is the value of mid. Let's name it r and this is what I have done. So as per the binary search algorithm, once we have calculated the value of mid, we can look for the element either towards the left or to the right side of the middle point. So it is very clear from the list that one occurrence is on the left, the other occurrence is on the right. So we have to perform the task either for the left side or for the right side. So first I am doing it for the left side. So for this, what I will do as this was the middle position, I am going to move the value of end to mid minus 1. So end was placed here and now it is shifted to this position. And this remains the start. And this is what we have got. The value of end is now 2. As I said, this condition must be true to continue with this process. So this time, the value of start is 0, end is at 2, 0 less than equal to 2 is condition, this condition is true. This time I have got the left side of my list where the indices of these values were 0, 1 and 2. According to the values of start and end here, I am going to calculate the value of mid which is this. If I check for the value of mid, against variable x this is 3 which is not true so this condition becomes false once we have done this and we have checked that the value at middle point is not x so now what we will do either we are going to look for the left side or to the right side so we have to now check if the value at arr of 1 is less than x you can see that 3 is less than 5, the condition becomes true. 
so now we are not searching on the left side we will be looking for the values on right side so this was start this was end and once we have checked this condition there is a little change in the value of start and start now will be pointing to index 2 so this what so we are going to do start will be at mid plus 1 making the value of start as 2 so now the values of start and end are these start end and this and the new value of mid will be this ARR of 2 is equal equal to 5 we can see condition becomes true again we are going to push this index the value of mid to R I've got this and also shift end to mid minus 1 which changes the value of end to 2 minus 1 which is 1 and the condition for continuing this process which was start should be less than equal to end 2 less than equal to 1 condition becomes false so we are done with this process and according to the entire dry run process we have got two indices for element 5 this process was done for the left side now we will be performing the same task for the right side of values where my list will be containing this part of the list these are few operations that will be done here also now this is an important statement as i said i will be looking towards the right side here i am going to shift the start variable in the previous uh, slide you have seen that i have moved the value of end because i wanted to search on the left side of the list to search on right side we are shifting the value of start so let's have a look at the values that we were having this was for mid this is for end and this was start as i've changed the value of start which now becomes index 4 that means this is going to be the new start and the list where we are going to search is this now value of start is 4 value of end is 6 the condition becomes true to continue with this process and the new list that i have is this the indices for these elements are 4 5 and 6 we are going to calculate the value of mid now you can see that we are checking uh, the value at middle index is not x x was 5 so the condition becomes false the value at this index is 7 so the condition is false so next that i have to check is if the value at at index 5 is less than the desired element this is 7 this is 5 the condition becomes false in this case we were shifting the value of start but now we are going to shift the value of n this part is false and now we are shifting end to mid minus 1 which makes the value of end at 5 minus 1 which is 4 so this is start this is end i have moved these values this was the value of mid this is not the end anymore i've got this as the start and end the value of start here is you can see 4 and the value of end is also 4 the condition becomes true let's calculate the value of mid value of mid is 4 arr of 4 which is the element 5 condition becomes true get this value in variable r so now we have this value and also now we are going to shift the value of start so start will be at mid plus 1 the value of mid is 4 4 plus 1 is 5 start is at 5 this is start 
end is at 4 5 less than equal to 4 so process done and my variable r was containing values 3 2 and for this part of the list I have got 3 and 4 now you can see uh, that according to the task that I have performed I've got this 3 twice what we will do we are going to sort this array and then sorted array r will be something like this out of which I'm going to extract the minimum value and the maximum value so I will be getting 2 and 4 which is the first and the last occurrence of element 5 now let's write the solution for this question now that we have already performed the dry run for this problem statement let's move towards writing the solution for this question first we are going to declare variables mid start and initialize start with 0 and variable end with n minus 1 n is the size of the array then I have declared this result variable which is a vector it is going to hold the positions where uh, element x will be found this is the loop which will run till the value of start is less than equal to n as discussed if the value of start becomes greater than the value of n then the loop will terminate next I have calculated the value of mid which is start plus n divided by 2 so we will get the middle index of the array ARR this is the first condition where I'm going to check if the value at middle position is equal to the value of x. If this condition of checking the value of x at middle point becomes true, in this statement I am adding the value of mid to the vector result by using the method pushback. Also, when the element is found at middle position, as discussed we are going to look for the left side of the array this time so I have moved the value of end to mid minus 1 if the if condition written above becomes false then it will come to this else if condition where we are checking if the value at the middle position is less than x so that means uh, we will now be searching on the right side of uh, the array so here we need to change the value of start to mid plus 1 and if if and else if conditions both are false then we will simply be moving end to mid minus 1. The while loop that I have written just now will check for the occurrences of variable x towards left side after calculating the value of mid for the first time. Once all this task is over now we will be checking the value x on right side of the array so for this I need to calculate the value of mid again here I have start and end variables again initialized to their original values where start is 0 and end is at n minus 1 this is what I did before writing the above loop again we are writing the same loop here I have calculated the value of mid this condition is also same just like the previous one where we are checking value x is at middle position or not in this statement I am adding the same value to the result vector now this is a change earlier I was moving end to mid minus 1 because we were looking for the element only towards the left side once we calculated the value of mid and throughout the process in the above loop we were just moving end and start on the left side of the array now in this loop we are going to shift start to the right side of the array because we have already checked how many times or what occurrences of this variable x were coming on left side so I have changed the value of start to mid plus 1 here I am checking if the value at middle position is less than x then I am shifting start to mid plus 1 else moving end to mid minus 1 so the only change in both the codes is in else if condition where to find the data on the left side we have to shift in and to find the data on right side we have to shift to start so these two loops will work one by one where in the above loop we will get indices of the values existing on left side and the second loop will give us the indices of the values existing on right side let's say if the element is not found in the array that means the size of result vector is 0 that means there is no value in the result vector then we will be returning only minus 1 as the question demands us to return two values so obviously you know that 
a function can return only one value so to return two or more values i will have to return it as a vector so that's why i have written minus one in curly brackets using this sort function i am going to sort the values of result vector and once the data of result is sorted i can now return the value at index zero and the value at the last index in the result vector so this is how i will get two occurrences of the values that we discussed one was at index 2 and the other was at index 4 array interview questions are crucial for coding interviews so if you are preparing for your upcoming tech interview at a tech company you must practice such questions there are different versions of these questions asked in coding interviews a few are like finding the total number of occurrences of a given element in a sorted array or finding the peak element in an array. The link to these questions can be found in the description box. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. If you like the video, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel for latest updates and more videos on algorithms. Till then keep working with smile.